Let's take a peek inside this two digit by two digit addition and subtraction intervention. On the left hand side of every page, you'll find some addition or subtraction problems that might regroup or might not require regrouping and will vary. I'll show you kind of where to find that information here in just a minute. I always begin every group by setting a timer and we solve these problems in about 10 to 15 minutes. Early on in the year, we might be doing a lot of this together and then weaning them off of that over time. Maybe initially I am doing a lot of the work and maybe students are using their hundreds chart to solve five plus two or using their hundreds chart to solve six plus two, but I'm doing a lot of the work and they're just helping me with some of the other components. As the year progresses though, then a lot of times we might start out with, okay, maybe we're gonna do the first three or four, maybe even the first two rows going all the way to five, and then maybe they try these on their own. But by the later parts of the year, students are able to do, or at least my students are able to do this all by themselves, and then I'm just kind of spot checking, and I like to put a dot above the column that is incorrect, and if they have the problem correct, then I put a check, sometimes even a reward like M&Ms or a Starburst if you have a whole row or a particular problem correct. Now, on the right-hand side of every booklet, you're going to find two sets of skills. So odd days will have one set of problems or one set of skills, and even days will have another set. So we'll walk through those now just so you're familiar with kind of what's expected in each of these. So each week you'll have one word problem and you're doing different skills with the same word problem. So on day one, you'll read the word problem and then you'll look for key words and write them below. So we might then talk about, oh, well this says in all, what does that usually mean? And I know some people are against keywords. They don't feel that's an effective strategy. I personally feel like with my students, it's nice to give them a place to start. And then we can check and see if that in all adding them together makes sense. But I like to start with keywords. Just to speed through this word problem portion so that you can see what that looks like. On day two then, again, it's the same word problem, but now we're gonna use a part, part, whole chart. And I like that for my students because then we can start to see, oh, well, if I know the whole and one part, am I gonna add or subtract those two numbers? If I know two parts and I need to find out the whole, am I going to add or subtract those two numbers? And having conversations such as that. On day three, we draw a picture. Again, same word problem. On day four, we write an equation for the word problem. And on day five, we actually get to solve the word problem. So I like that at this level, it takes it through step-by-step step so that your students can see how are they going to solve this word problem? What do they need to do with this? Then over here, we have a number of the day where we're going to represent with base 10 blocks, tens and ones, and an expanded form. We also compare two numbers using greater than, less than, or equal to. We touch on fractions just a little bit, and it's very simple, but talking about words such as halves, thirds, and fourths, and so here it tells them to divide this shape into fourths. And so then we, it gives us the opportunity to talk about equal parts. What does that word mean? If it was halves, what would that mean? And it really is just very repetitive, spiraling through halves, thirds, and fourths. We also work on number patterns and using, I like to use my hundreds chart with this. We use a dry erase marker and circle 10 on our hundreds chart, 12, 14, and then continue the pattern with our dry erase marker before writing it here. The same, we would then erase our dry erase or our um, hundreds chart and we would circle the 60, circle 65, circle 70 and see what numbers would come next. Then we look at these 10 partners and use them to solve various problems. So here, if I know that five plus five is 10, well then what would be eight more from that? If I know that seven and three equals 10, what would be eight more from that? Ooh, over here, they're not touching, but we still know that six plus four is 10, and then we would add seven more. Same here, if I know six plus four is 10, what would three more be? So this will be the same. The page will look very similar on all days that are odd. 
Then on days that are even, we're gonna switch up the skills just a little bit. Remember, we'll still have that next piece of the word problem. We're going to represent numbers. We're also gonna get out a ruler and measure in inches and centimeters. For fractions, instead of us doing the drawing, instead, we're going to see, hmm, is this halves? Circle it, thirds or fourths. We're gonna finish those number patterns and we're gonna work on 10 partners. On this day, then your numbers will be different, but then you'll be working on those problems to start seeing, oh, well, nine plus one here, hmm, five more would be 15. And that will repeat over and over and over again. So every even day looks similar, every odd day looks similar. Really, it's just this middle section here that changes just a little bit. Now, maybe you're saying, hey, my kids can already do addition and subtraction without regrouping. What should I do or where should I start? So this is um, in the first couple of pages of the product and it will give a breakdown as to what weeks are focusing on what particular group of skills. And so with this, maybe your kids are good with this without regrouping part. They need to dive in maybe to week 16 and do with regrouping. And so again, I printed out some other pages here. This is week 10 where they're working on subtraction. Back at week 13, where then they have some mixed addition and mixed subtraction. Week 16, then we start introducing, here we have regrouping. And so for me, some of my students start at week one, some of my students start at week 16. It just depends on what their level is and what they're needing most. Week 19 then is subtraction with regrouping. And then week 29 has this mixed addition and subtraction. And I think it's important for kids to understand what the sign is and then remember what the skills are that they're going to need for that. Also, what I find is my students kick butt when we're on week 19 and we're subtracting with regrouping. But if we go to addition with regrouping, it's like we've never done subtraction once we go back or vice versa. So I think it's important that once they've demonstrated a good understanding, to do some mixed addition and subtraction so that it's not like, oh my gosh, we've never done addition before, or we've forgotten everything we know about subtraction.